Have you ever wondered if there's more to life than what you're seeing? I mean it, have you ever asked that question and wondered, is there more to what it means to be alive than what I'm seeing or experiencing? I remember when I was in high school, so often people told me, you know, high school, it's the best days of your life. And I had my parents' friends saying, man, if I could go back to high school, those were the days. And not that high school was bad for me, but whenever I heard that, I thought, I really hope, I really hope this isn't it. I hope this isn't as good as it gets because somewhere deep in me, there was this longing and desire for a fuller, more satisfying life. And I think that's a desire that in a lot of ways never fully goes away. I think as followers of Jesus, we have this sense that you know, there's more potential here on earth than what we're seeing. Things could be so much better. There could be more peace. There could be more joy. There could be more hope. And so often society tells us that in order to, to, to achieve those things, in order for us to feel like we have a sense of purpose and that we are living a fulfilled life, that we need to just look out for ourselves. You need to do whatever you can, step over whatever people you need to step over to get to the top and work harder and do more and then that way at the end of the day when you've made enough money and you've achieved the things that you want to achieve, then you'll feel like you've made it and that life is complete. But I'm sure you've heard people who, who have done that work their whole lives to get all the things they want to get and then when they get all of that, there's still this sense that this isn't the hope and fulfillment that I really was expecting. And over and over again throughout the Bible, Jesus talks about the fact that in order for us to live a life that feels truly fulfilling and truly satisfying, it's gonna look a lot different than what society tells us. It's not about looking out for ourselves and trying to get as much for ourselves as we can. It's more about looking out for others and putting others before ourselves. It's about looking out for the people that are overlooked. For the next two weeks, we're gonna be looking at something called uh, the Beatitudes, which come at the beginning of um, the Sermon on the Mount, which is basically one of Jesus' most well-known sermons uh, throughout the Gospels. And we're gonna be looking at it in the book of Matthew, which is the first book in the New Testament. Um, and the Beatitudes serve as this kind of list of things that the kingdom of God is all about. Now there's a lot to unpack in every single statement within the Beatitudes, but I think a pretty consistent theme that flows throughout all of these, uh, all these verses is this idea of radical selflessness. This idea of putting others before ourselves in a way that is just so different and unique from what other people are doing that it makes people around us say, what, you know, why would they do that? Why would they love that person so well? Why would they take so much time out of their day to care for the, that person? And Jesus tells us that as his followers, we need to be on the lookout for those who are overlooked. We need to be able to have compassion for those that need it most. And we are called to be peacemakers in the face of injustice and violence and brutality. And we're called to find a better way. But as I say all this, I realize that it gets really easy to think like, okay, so we, we just need to work harder. We just need to do more. And then that way we'll be following Jesus and we'll be bringing the kingdom of God here. But Jesus starts the Beatitudes with a phrase that I think is so important for us to understand that really helps frame the way we look at the rest of the lines in it. One of the first verses talks about, uh, Jesus says, blessed are the poor in spirit. And I read a, a quote about this phrase, the poor in spirit, that I think is really cool and helps us to understand what Jesus is getting at a little bit more. And it says this, the call to be poor in spirit is placed first for a reason, because it puts the rest of the commands into perspective. They cannot be fulfilled by one's own strength but only by a beggar's resilience on God's power. The Beatitudes aren't meant to serve as this checklist of things we need to do and work harder at in order to be considered followers of Jesus. Instead, they're examples of the ways that we will start to see the world and to see the other people in the world if we truly come before Jesus and ask him to see others the way that he sees them. The Beatitudes serve as this list of characteristics and things that we will be about if we want to be following Jesus. And so it's not about doing these things on our own strength and it's not about us working harder. 
Um, in fact, it's, it's us submitting to God. It's us coming before Jesus and saying, I want to be a part of the work that you're already doing in the world. Help me do that. And if we pray that prayer, Jesus is going to start to open our eyes to things that we've never seen before. So as we head off into small groups tonight, I want to leave you with this passage. And it comes from 1 John chapter 4. And it says this, God showed how much he loved us by sending his one and only son into the world so that we might have eternal life through him. This is real love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as a sacrifice to take away our sins. Dear friends, since God loved us that much, we surely ought to love each other.